smart news. And this is from Smithsonian Mag. Keeping you current, how forensic scientists once tried to see, and that means see, a dead person's last sight. Let's get into this. Scientists once believed that the dead's last sight could be resolved from their extracted eyeballs. And let me just tell you, this gets creepier and creepier. May 23rd, 2016. Image on her retina may show girl's slayer reads a headline from a 1914 article in the Washington Times. And you gotta remember, uh, the technology that we have today, in all reality, they are 50 to 100 years ahead of us. So back in 1914, they were already 50 years ahead. So just keep that in mind. A 20 year old woman, Teresa Hollander, had been beaten to death and her body found in a cemetery. But the fact that her eyes were still open gave her family hope. Perhaps the last thing she saw, presumably the face of her murderer, was imprinted like a, the negative of a photograph on her retinas writes Lindsay Fitt-Harris for the Shurigen's Shur Apprentice. Accordingly, a photograph of the woman's retina was taken at the suggestion of a local oc oculist, who then told police that the retina would show the last object within her vision before she became unconscious, the Times reported. The grand jury would see the image on, sun, on Saturday. Though it may sound like folly these days, many believed in these statements at the time, which was a period of riveting developments in both biology and photography. People were well aware of the similarities between the structure of the human eye and that of a camera. So the idea that the eye could capture and hold an image didn't seem so far-fetched. Indeed, some experiments made it seem possible. The process of developing the retina's last images was called optop opto optography. I guess I said that right. Sorry. And the image themselves, auto optograms, writes Dolly Stoles for her blog, Strange Remains. Experiments in this field first started with Franz Christian Ball, a phys physiologist who in 1876 discovered a pigment hiding in the back of an eye that would bleach in the light and recover in the dark. He called this retinal pigment, quote, visual purple, and today we call it rhodospin. Rhodopsin. Wilhelm Frederick Kuhn, a professor of psychology at the University of Heldeberg, quickly took up the study, study of rotospin, according to Arthur B. Evans, writing about optograms. Hold on just a second. Let me turn my phone off. New phone equals need to go on mute before video. All right, sorry about that. Quickly took up the study of rotospin, according to Arthur B. Evans, writing about optograms. Kuhn devised a process to fix the bleached rotospin in the eye, and in the eye, and develop an image from the result. Evans quotes an article by biochemist George Wald about Kuhn's work. One of Kuhn's early optograms was made as follows. An albino rabbit was fastened with its head facing a barred window. From this position, the rabbit could see only a gray and clouded sky. The animal's head was covered for several minutes with a cloth to adapt its eyes to the dark. That is to let rotospin accumulate in its rods. 
Then the animal was exposed for three minutes to the light. It was immediately decapitated. The eye removed and cut open along the equator. In the rear half of the eyeball containing the retina laid in a solution of a loom for fixation. The next day Kuhn saw printed upon the retina in bleached and unaltered rotospin a picture of the window with the clear pattern of its bars. Oh wow. Oh my goodness. Do you see that? Coon's rabbit optograms, the leftmost shows a rabbit retina without an optogram and just traces of blood vessels and nerve fibers. The middle comes from a rabbit that stared at a seven paned arch window and the rightmost from a rabbit that stared at a three side by side window. That was Coon 1877. People quickly latched onto the idea as a tool for forensic investigations. The College of Optometrists in the UK reports that police photographed the eye of murdered man of a murdered man in April of 1877, only partly aware of what optography involved, of what op, optography involved and that investigators on the trail of Jack the Ripper may have considered a proposal to use the technique. Faith in optography was misplaced. However, as Kuhn's experiments showed that the only simple high contrast surroundings were able to produce inter interpretable optograms, Douglas J. Lonska writes in progress in brain research. Furthermore, the retina needs to be removed very quickly from the recently deceased, he wrote at the time. I am not prepared to say that the eyes, which have remained in the head an hour or more after de decapitation, will no longer give satisfactory optograms. Indeed, the limit for obtaining a good image seems to be in rabbits from about 60 to 90 minutes, while the eyes of oxen seem to be useless after one hour. The only optogram known <clears throat> to have come from the eye of a human was developed by Kuhn. The man was Erhard Gustav Reif, sentenced to death for drowning his two youngest children. Oh, on November 16th of 1880, Kuhn took the man's decapitated head from the guillotine and created an optogram within 10 minutes. The image, however, is very ambiguous, as Kuhn's drawing of it shows. So this is just a drawing of what he's seen, which definitely looks like a guillotine, you guys. Kuhn's drawing of the optogram he saw in the eye of an executed, executed man in 1880. Kuhn never claimed to say what the image depicted, but people have interpreted the shape as the guillotine's blade or the steps the man had to take to reach it. Both are probably fanciful interpretations as Reef was blindfolded shortly before his death. Well, I thought the eyes actually had to see it, right? Still, the idea persisted and leaped into fiction. Jules Verne used optography as a plot in Les Fris Kip, the Brothers Kip, published in 1902, Evans writes. The Epi Epon brothers end up falsely accused of the murder and a ship's captain. When the victim's friends asked for an enlargement of a photograph of the dead captain, the captain's son noticed two points of light in the man's eyes. With the aid of a microscope and the faces of the real, real murderers, two villainous sailors are seen and the Kip brothers are set free. For decades, people claimed to use this technique, at least if newspapers are to be believed. Photos show killers' faces in, in retinas, and slain man's eyes show picture of murder, are just two of the headlines showing the optogram hype. 
Even more modern minds are tantalized by the idea. Optograms appear in Doctor Who, The Crimson Horror from 2013, and in The Fringe, the same old story in 2008. The photograph in the case of Teresa Hollander never did reveal anything to help or hurt the suspicions that her ex-boyfriend was responsible. Fitzharris reports, he was tried twice and found not guilty. Wow. Something to think about. I mean, with the technology that we have today, you would think that uh, this, even a typical, maybe a, a brain scan to the eyes or something with all the technology they have, they may be able to do a whole lot more stuff with this, dig deeper and maybe scare some people from committing murder because you know people try so hard to conceive themselves and and do this and do that and you know when the body's found maybe there's some type of test that they're working on to where they can do some type of scan and actually find what that person's seen in their last few minutes before death i don't know please leave a comment let me know what you think Please like the video if you don't, if you don't like it, dislike it. Um, but much love to all of you anyways. I hope you all had a great holiday and I'm going to try to get more videos out here soon. I'll talk to you all later. God bless.